Welcome to an HR Technology Channel podcast here on Total Picture Radio. I'm Peter Clayton, and joining me today is HR Technology columnist and leading independent industry analyst who's been following recruiting automation since it began in 1988, Bill Cutick co-chair emeritus of the 17th annual HR Technology Conference and Expo returning to Las Vegas October 8th through the 10th, 2014. Bill is host of the Bill Cutick Radio Show, and if you're listening to this, I'm sure you are also subscribed to his bi-weekly podcast, uh, Unrehearsed and Unedited Conversations with HR Thought Leaders. So, Bill, Thanks so much for taking time to speak with me here on Total Picture Radio from your lovely abode out there on Fire Island. Well, thank you, Peter. Um, you give the best introductions of anyone I know. I mean, we should do a show every week or two. <laughs> okay. So people can hear all those nice things about me. Although, I, I question whether I did the right thing in telling people in my latest column and human resource executive that I have indeed been following recruiting automation since it started in 19. 19- 88, which is 26 years ago, and clearly I was well out of high school by the time I started following it, so <laughs> it leads to some inevitable and awful conclusions about how old I might be, but it's true, it, it, it is my first app that I followed, it's my favorite, it's the one I feel like I know more about, both historically and currently, so I'm delighted to be here talking to you about it. Great, because uh, I want to return to the uh, recent column you had in HR Executive Online titled, Three New Recruiting Systems, The Edge Moves More to the Center. Um, You started your article by stating, quote, sorry to repeat myself, but you know the day of the applicant tracking system, ATS, is so over, unquote. Yet every company I know is chained to an ATS, not to say that recruiters like them, they don't. So can you please explain yourself? Sure. Um, What that means is that the center of value in recruiting has shifted away from the ATS, which is now seen by most people as a necessary evil of uh, administration and process coordination and scheduling and sort of all the mundane stuff. But really... Remember, it's called applicant tracking system, which means nobody gets in there until they're already an applicant. And the real value in recruiting now is finding the applicants, is attracting the applicants, is getting prospects to become applicants, and then shoving them into this ATS where you know they are deep fried and, and broiled and otherwise split in half. So that, that's, that's the point I was making. Yes, everyone does have an ATS. Most people don't like the one they have because it feels like handcuffs. They're always going to have one. But the point of my column, which, by the way, people can find easily by going to hreonline, one word, dot com, and just scrolling down to find my bearded face at the bottom, and they can click on it. Uh, the point of the column is that the, these three new systems are trying to combine, and I'm sure we'll get into it, what have long been called the edge applications into the ATS. Right. Well, before we get into that, you know, I've thought of the the legacy ATS systems, the Taleos, the, uh, you know, the Connexus success factors as sort of the VCRs and the new generation of ATSs, uh, you know, like the iSIMs, for instance, as apps. Is that a fair assessment? Uh, almost, um, definitely the Taleos, the brass rings, the virtual edges of the world are the legacy systems. I would not include success factors in that. Their system is not so old and it is integrated with jobs to web, which offers a lot of this functionality. And you're right to point to iSIMS. Uh, they sent me a complaining email after my column came out that basically said, hey, what about us? You know, <laughs> you know, we offer all this stuff and blah, blah, blah. And I explained to them that the column was about new systems that, ha- that are just now coming out, literally just now. I mean, we're talking about the last two or three weeks. and I don't know when you're going to have this posted, but we're talking about May, these things coming out in May. And iSIMS, as you know, has been around for a while, plus has you know, thousands of customers. 
And that's not what the column was about. It was yeah. about these new systems that have fewer than 100 customers. So let's get into that discussion. Your article highlights three companies, Workday, Cornerstone On Demand, and Ultimate, all who have recently come out with brand new recruiting systems, as you just mentioned. Um, so uh, uh, the all built from the ground up. So kind of expand on this for us, Bill, and sure. tell us really what's happening here. As I started to say, the, 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 the value of recruiting automation has shifted to what have been called the edge applications. And these are the applications that deal with someone before they become an applicant and get into your ATS. And that includes candidate relationship management, which we call CRM. The rest of the world thinks of that as customer relationship management. It refers to referral automation, social recruiting, even search engine optimization. Now in the old days, and I like this analogy a lot, in the old days, all of these applications hung off the ATS the way in the old days the HRMS had things like recruiting and succession planning and learning hanging off it until somebody consolidated all of those hangers on as the talent management suite and decided to integrate them all. Similarly, here in recruiting, we have these edge applications no longer hanging off of ATSs, but in these three new systems being brought into the center of the automation action. Uh, I don't think you're going to have too many people creating talent acquisition suites. Instead, I think you're going to find that people make their recruiting suite uh, to include all of what used to be considered edge applications. So in your article, you quote Workday's VP of Product Management, quote, recruiting is a team sport which currently has a lack of collaboration or connection to other apps and ATS design only for compliance and recruiters, unquote. Hasn't this been the problem all along? I mean, none of these systems play nice with each other's, and in addition, they have terrible UXs. Yeah, well, I mean, the ATS somehow managed to do it worse than most. They sure did. And the reason <laughs> for that is that, as you know, traditionally, all HR software was designed to be used by HR professionals. It was not to be designed to be used by line managers or simple employees. That, of course, we know has changed with the talent management suite. But the ATS persisted in being designed to be used only by recruiters or those within HR worried about compliance, when the fact is the hiring manager really had to use it too. And, and, and most of the legacy ATSs did not make room for the hiring manager. And that's what Leanne is talking about when she says that it's a team sport and that it has to have connections among users and also among other applications. For instance, all of your current employees who Jerry Crispin's annual source of hire report indicates that most companies hire the, fill the largest number of positions with people who already work for them. It's known as internal mobility. So if your ATS doesn't have easy access to your current employees, perhaps also to your contingent employees, then it's not searching you know, a holistic view of who works for you and who might be fit for this new job. There's also a, a trend for these companies to partner with services like job board posting and aggregation, background checking and video interviewing, companies like HireVue. Uh, Brass Ring, for instance, just recently did a deal with LinkedIn which uh, got a lot of conversation out there on the blogosphere. And I miss that. Do you, can you describe that deal? Do you remember? Uh, it, basically, they put out a press release saying that, uh, that Brass Ring now is integrated within LinkedIn so that when you're on Brass Ring, you, you can seamlessly go into uh, LinkedIn. To LinkedIn. Yes, okay, exactly. that's, that's actually very old news. I don't know why they decided to put out a uh, press release about it. That was about last month. Something. Yeah, yeah, about a year ago, LinkedIn chose its four favorites, and they were, of course, the legacy systems of Brass Ring and, um, and Taleo, as well as Lumes, which is, is, is headquartered in England, and PeopleClick, now part of PeopleFluent. And they all gave them this, what they call cross-system awareness, 
which allows the users of their four systems to view LinkedIn from within those applications rather than toggling between the two. Now, this doesn't seem like a big deal to you and me, right? Big deal. You have to toggle between two systems. But if you're a recruiter and you're toggling 50 times a day, you're going cross-eyed from that. So the fact that you can access LinkedIn in a pane, if you will, of your ATS is a big deal. So the, the four of them have had that for a long time. And, and Workday says they've got something a little special that allows a candidate, when they're applying through a Workday-powered uh, candidate website for a corporation, to find out automatically which of their LinkedIn contacts already work there. And that's a pretty nifty thing. And you'd want, and, but I mean, again, you could find that yourself if you quit the application you were entering and you went into LinkedIn and you searched among your contacts with that company name. It could be done another way, but it's pretty neat to have it right there. And they also have a thing that the hiring manager can also look at an applicant's profile and see their common contacts. Also a great thing for the applicant, for the, for, for the hiring manager to call some people up and say, hey, what do you think about this guy? Because uh, they, they know they have people in common, right? And, and, those are the, and that's, that's why employee referrals are the second largest source of successful applicants. Because an employee, think about it, is the best recruiter your company could possibly have. They know the, the, the prospect, hopefully soon to become an applicant, and they know the company. So for a hiring manager to have someone who knows the applicant and who knows them, God, that's heaven, right? <laughs> exactly, exactly. You know, you mentioned in your article that, that Workday has a, quote, special relationship with LinkedIn. Can you explain that to us? Well, that's sort of historical and financial uh -huh. in that, in that um, the CEO of Workday is Anil Bushri. You know, everybody knows Dave Duffield, who started the company with Anil, and, and Dave is really now the chairman, and for years, Anil has run the company day to day. Anyway, he was a partner, he may still be a partner, it's always a little gray to me how that works, at a leading venture capital firm called Greylock, which is famous for really leading the charge for investments in enterprise software applications, i.e. the software companies use to run themselves rather than the software you use on your iPhone to pick a restaurant. And when at Greylock, Anil led the early investment, because VCs make early investments, right? He led the early investment in LinkedIn and remains close to its founder, now its chairman, Reid Hoffman. So my question's always been, you know, what good is this going to do you, Workday? You know, you're, you're, you're as tight with LinkedIn as anybody can be tight with LinkedIn. And the fact is, LinkedIn is the mother load of recruiting right now. I mean, I, I read somewhere and... You know, I, I can't verify the statistic that 93% of corporate recruiters have a recruiting seat on LinkedIn. When last I heard that cost $8,000 a seat, it may be $10,000 by now. And I know that every single one of them would rather spend the day standing at their desk than give up the functionality they get from this $8,000 seat. So if anybody can get a truly favored integration with LinkedIn, they're going to have an enormous advantage in the recruiting field. Uh, and to be fair now, LinkedIn only stands out for salaried corporate hiring. I mean, if you want hourly workers in big box retail or in chain restaurants, you don't go to LinkedIn to find exactly. your applicants. Exactly. Um, all right. So let's, uh, let's sort of expand all of this out to uh, October. What are you expecting to see this year, and what will be what will we be talking about at the uh, HR Technology Conference and Expo in Mandalay Bay? God, well, Peter, you shame me because I've taken the fact that they're no longer paying me as reason not to pay so close attention. <laughs> um, I know that that Steve has gotten three terrific, terrific. Um, keynote speakers. Uh, the opening keynote is this guy McAfee that we were thinking about last year but wasn't available, who's really a terrific new age uh, analyst and, and thinker. Closing keynote is Ray Wong, who I never wanted to ask because I didn't want to ask him to cut his fee 
to, to speak at, at the conference, and he is literally the single most famous IT analyst in the world. And he's going to be closing the conference. And there's a woman whom I don't know who's going to be opening. I also saw that Paul Sparta, who was the founder of Plateau, an LMS vendor, then uh, a talent management vendor, and perhaps the most honest and outspoken vendor executive that I know, is going to be running a panel, which will be great. And Steve is running a panel. And also, I mean, I'm just ashamed that I never thought of it. Steve's gotten Naomi Lee Bloom basically to sort of monitor a whole new track that's more techy than anything we've previously held there. And it is a little odd that the conference is called the HR Technology Conference, and we've never really had any bits and bytes material in the conference, something that an HR IT guy would flock to to learn how to do his job better. And so Naomi is, is having a terrific panel that's going to extend over two sessions with Holger Mueller, is a name that stands out, and Mike, who's, who's with Constellation Research, and Mike Krupa, who's with Mercer, I don't offhand remember, the other two uh, panelists. Uh, but she's going to have a terrific panel that lasts for two sessions that really gets into the bits and bites of this stuff, if that's where you want to be. Um, so those are some of the things I'm looking forward to. And Based on, on the article we've been discussing today and, and you know, sort of the, the transformation that a lot of these systems are going through, trying to be more of a, you know, a, a, a one source uh, application that can do everything for their clients. Um, in addition to the three that we've spoken about, are there any others that you see emerging as, as really you know, stepping up to the plate and, and making some of these transitions that are so necessary for, for these ATSs to do. Right. Well, if you want to talk about ATS, I can just list all the complaining emails I got after the, <laughs> after the column came out. Ceridian literally announced a brand new uh, recruiting system on, I think, three days before the column came out. And I'll be writing about them next time. I understand they've chosen to leave the edges to Jobvite, which does a terrific job at referrals and candidate relationship management and, and uh, email campaigns and that sort of thing that, that um, recruiters want to do. I mentioned in the article that there's more to come from Success Factors, uh, which has a slightly older recruiting system, but they're, they're, they're pushing the envelope. And they're pushing the envelope, frankly, because they're, they're, they're toe-to-toe with Workday in selling, you know, the whole end-to-end -end functionality of hire to retire in HRMS. And they certainly want to be as good as, if not better than, Workday in recruiting. And then, you know, almost lost in this plethora, IBM Finally, three or four weeks ago, probably early May, I had already decided to write mostly about Workday and Cornerstone by then, unfortunately, announced exactly what it's going to do with all the talent management assets it inherited from, by buying Conexa. Mm -hmm. And it basically an, announced its talent management suite, which of course, of course includes Brass Ring and, and perhaps some extensions to that, which I want to find out about. So, you know, everybody's in on this game. I right, mean, right. Elaine Orler, whom you know terribly well from the Candies and from other places, wrote on the LinkedIn group, she said, oh, great, now I can give up my annual presentation on edge application, recruiting edge applications, because they're all moving towards the center, and I don't have to write about that anymore. Uh, but I think everyone's sort of on this bandwagon. Everyone knows that most recruiters hate their ATSs. And, and, and they're anxious to please them in a way that the incumbent isn't pleasing them. Well, of course, so much consolidation has taken place in the industry over the last several years. Do you see any more mergers and acquisitions happening this year? That's, that's interesting. I mean, the, 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 the merger and acquisition everyone talks about is Cornerstone. Mm -hmm. Because Cornerstone seems to be more or less the leading talent management vendor, which includes recruiting, and my article talks a lot, by the way, about Cornerstone's new recruiting app, which now is about a year and a half old, I think, two years old. They started work a year before Workday. But, I mean, there are other talent management vendors like, like PeopleFluent and Lumess itself. 
uh, who, and Saba, who are still out there looking to make those sales. Uh, but I think the acquisitions may come in the new, if you will, edge applications. There were three of them, Intello, uh, TalentBin, and Guild. Mm-hmm. And all three of them were, were valley firms aiming at solving the biggest valley problem, which is how do I find software engineers? It's so competitive here in the valley. It's the number one talent that people want from people in the valley. How do I find them? And all three of them decided you ain't going to find them on LinkedIn because the A-plus engineers keep their LinkedIn bio really vague because they don't want a bunch of recruiters calling them. They only want Yahoo, to, they only want, want you know, Facebook and Google to call them, right? right? And maybe Yahoo and maybe a couple others. Um, so these all three guys are creating their own profiles of software engineers by mining their social exhaust, as they call it, which is collecting what they've written online. And, and, and engineers have tons and tons of online forums where they may contribute. So they got lots of stuff out there. And then creating their own profile of them based on that, instead of, I'll never forget, this company called Trovix, which Monster bought a, a while ago. Uh, you know, their, their first question was, uh, does the, about software engineers, does their, their computer degree come from MIT or Stanford? <laughs> And, and, and Guild and, and, and the other three are very proud of the fact that they could find a, high, a guy who never went to college, right. who was, in fact, a terrific software engineer. And we know that's one profession that can be self-taught and people can be great without going to college. Anyway, long story short, Talentpin's already been bought by Monster. So I would say the next acquisition targets are Intello and Guild even though they both have VCs who are willing to invest more money in them and think that they can make it alone as, as a standalone company and get to maybe an IPO or, if not, a very high-numbered acquisition. So I think those are the two acquisitions to look at. Great. Well, Bill, thank you again for taking time to speak with us here today on Total Picture Radio. I really like your blue shirt, and it's always great to talk to you. God, I've forgotten that, 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 that uh, <laughs> Skype was in color. I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad you can see my blue shirt. It's brand new. My wife Nancy just bought it for me. Oh, good to talk to you again, Peter. Bye bye.